chapter, we're going to be studying the limits to measurement. In this lesson, we're going to look at unit conversion and rounding. All right, hi everybody. So we're going to take a look at unit conversion and rounding, and, and rounding is going to be a kind of a big deal here with this. Um, so much of what we do in our daily lives requires like, an understanding of measurement. Uh, you might not even be kind of conscious that it's happening, um, but we talk about measurement quite a bit here. But most of the time, we get away with, without being too careful with the, the vocabulary that we use and the, even the values that we use, okay? Because we can get close enough. But if your job requires you to be taking measurements, then the odds are pretty good that you're going to have to be concerned with both accuracy and precision. We want to talk about that in, in this course here and in this chapter in particular. Okay, now we're, we're going to spend a, a fair bit of deal about the, uh, talking about this, but just so that you get a sense before we get too far into it, whoops, sorry, accuracy deals with, with the truth of your measurement, okay, and precision, precision deals with the, the smallest, uh, the smallest unit. Basically, precision is a limit on the device. Okay, it's how good your measuring device is that you're using here. And, and sometimes we need to be really cognizant of that and, and communicate that so that the people that we're talking with, they, they know to what degree they can trust our measurement there. Now let's back off that a little bit before we talk about uh, accuracy and precision more specifically. So in Canada, we use the metric system, what we call the SI system or the Système International. Okay, it's the metric system. Uh, at least we use it for a lot. We're, Canada's kind of in a, a situation where we're, we're caught um, between systems right now. Because the United States uses the imperial system, we frequently use the imperial system. That's why a lot of us still, when we ask, you know, how tall are you, we'll measure it in, in feet and inches, you know. How heavy are you? We still talk about it in terms of pounds, even though technically we should be measuring these things in in meters and centimeters and in kilograms. Anyway, so we're kind of caught here. Canada's, we, we got kind of a weird system too here. When, when I ask you, for example, how far away Calgary is, most of you won't give me uh, the answer in terms of the kilometers. You'll actually tell me how long it will take me to drive there. Canada's so big, we measure distance in terms of time. Uh, not not in terms of kilometers and, and whatnot. Anyway, so we want to focus on right now just conversions of measurements in, in the metric system here. Uh, and we do that really by just understanding uh, the, the prefixes that we put in, in front of the word meter. So we're going to use meter. This is our base value right here. And to go from meter to the other units that we use here really just involves a matter of moving the decimal place here. Now, when we move to the left here along our little chart here, the units get smaller, okay? So we go from a meter to a decimeter to a centimeter to a millimeter. The units are getting smaller here. And what you're seeing here is these are the, the number of those measurements that you need, <coughs> sorry, to be the exact same measurement. So I need 10 decimeters to be one meter. 100 centimeters to be one meter, 1,000 millimeters to be one meter. So what you're seeing here is that with this one meter here, notice that as the units get smaller, I need more of them to be equal to a meter. Now let's go the other way. Decameter, hectometer, kilometer. Well, to get to, uh, when I'm looking at a decameter, I need a tenth of that to be equal to a, a meter here. So in other words, there are 10 meters in a decameter. A hectometer, I need a hundredth, okay, a hundredth of a hectometer is one meter. So I would need a hundred of those. And for a kilometer, there's a thousand meters in a kilometer. So a thousandth of a kilometer is one meter. So that's why all of these measurements here are, are basically equal to one meter. And notice that as, when I convert to a smaller unit, the number gets larger. If I convert to a larger unit, the number gets smaller, okay? And that's how I want you to think about that. Look at your units. Look at your units. Look which direction they're going. If the unit gets smaller, the number must get bigger. So in other words, the, the decimal has to move to the right, okay? Because look at that. As the, as the number here gets larger, I just keep moving the decimal here. To go from 1 to 10, I move the decimal 1 over. 
to move from one to 100, I move it over twice, right? And I, I reveal these little, these, uh, these unit, sorry, placeholders, that's what I want to do, these place values there uh, that I put zeros in and the number gets larger. If I go to a, a larger unit, then I need the decimal to be moving the other direction here. So I look at where the, the prefixes are in my chart. I count the number of times I have to jump. So like, let's say starting to millimeters to go up to dec decimeters, I got to move twice. Okay, it's two jumps. So I'm going to move the decimal. And because the decimeter is, is larger, I need to make my number smaller. So I'd, I'd move my decimal two units to the left. Okay. Anyway, just bear that in mind. When you're, when you're looking at the chart here, just find the two prefixes that you're comparing here, figure out which one you're converting to, count the number of jumps, and then you're going to move the decimal that many places. If we're going from a small, sorry, small to a large unit, then our number gets smaller. If we're going from a large to a small unit, then our, larger, our number gets larger. Just bear that in mind. Okay, now let's take a look at some examples. Okay, let's take a look at some examples now. So convert the following to the indicated units. So I want to convert from 12 centimeters to meters. So, so I'm converting from a small unit to a large unit. So th the number is going to get smaller, okay? So I go, I'm going to go back, and I'll just do this a, a few times here to get used to this. So I'm going to go from centimeters to meters, and so I see that there's a jump of two, okay? So now, my decimal place, if I don't see it, is right behind the two. And so what I'm going to do now is I need the number to get smaller. If I'm going to a large unit, the number's got to get smaller, so I'm going to move it two units to the left. So now the decimal is in front of the one. So it's going to be 0 0.12 meters. If I move from meters to millimeters, okay, I'm moving from a large unit to a small unit, Okay, so the number is going to get larger. Now to move from meters to millimeters, okay, meters to millimeters, I'm starting here, that's one, two, three. Okay, that's uh, a movement of three here, but I need the number to now get larger. So the number's gotta, the decimal's gotta move to the right here. So it's gonna be one, two, three. So now when I write that, that decimal is going to be moved to uh, between the 5 and the 4, so it'll be 5.4 millimeters, okay? So now, millimeters to hectometers, okay, well now, i got to take a quick look at this. Millimeters to hectometers, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 jumps, and I'm going from small to large, so the number's got to get small. So that's five steps, okay, five steps. The decimal, if I don't see it, is right here. To make that number smaller, I gotta move to the left here. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be 0 0.17 hectometers. Here, 4.6 hectometers to decimeters. Okay, hectometers, again, these are things that I'm, you're not typically familiar with, but hectometers to decimeters, I'm going to jump one, two, three times. So I'm going to move the decimal three places. I am going from a large to a smaller unit, so the number's got to get larger. So I'm going to take that decimal at one, two, three, that opens up two spots. So 4,600 decimeters. Now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll just kind of give you the, the jump here. To go from decimeter to kilometer, if you go back to the chart here, you'd notice that there's that there's two steps there, okay? And I'm going from a small unit to a large unit, so the number must get smaller. So the decimal, if I don't see it, is here. I'm going to move it twice, so this will become 8.65 kilometers. To go from a kilometer to a centimeter, if you were to go look on that chart there, you'd notice that that's a jump of, of five units. Okay, or five jumps, there are three to get to meters and then two more to get to centimeters. I'm going from a large unit to a small unit, so the number's gotta get larger. So I'm gonna move this decimal five places to the, uh, to the right here. So one, two, three, four, five. That opens up a spot. So 2,880 centimeters. Okay, so just remember how that works. Okay, you count the number of jumps, okay, that you gotta make on the chart. Then you're going to move the decimal that number of places here. If you're going from small, sorry, large unit to a small unit, the number gets larger. 
okay? A small unit to a large unit, the number gets uh, smaller. I think I said that right. Okay, S large unit to small unit, the number gets larger. Uh, small unit to large unit, the number gets smaller. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to take a moment here and talk about rounding, okay? Because it is actually going to become a bit of an issue in this particular chapter here. So we're going to round each of these numbers to the nearest tenth. So to the nearest tenth is the spot, the placeholder, just to the right of the decimal. And to round to the nearest tenth, I need to look at the nearest, I need to look at the hundredth position. If that number is five or more, we're going to round this one up. So this is going to become 64.3, okay? So I'm looking for the nearest tenth. I'm going to go to the hundredth. Now, by the way, I don't, I don't even care about the fact that that's a seven. That has nothing to do with it. I only ever round once. Sometimes I've seen people, they, they, they round multiple times in one question. You never do that. I look at the four because that's less than five here. This placeholder, the tenth spot, stays the same. So 24.5. 86.118. Uh, I'm running to the nearest tenth. I look at the hundredth. That's less than five. So this is going to stay at 86.1. Okay. 3.067. Okay, I'm running to the nearest tenth. My hundredth position is greater than five, so that's going to round that up one value. Basically, I'm just trying to pick what is the nearest tenth Okay, to the number that I'm given. So here, 11.02 uh, two hectometers. That two, I'm looking for the nearest tenth, and that two is less than five, so this is going to be 11.0. That's going to stay the same. Now watch what happens here. 73.971. So I, I look at the, the seven here. It's greater than five, so this is going to go up one. But nine really can't go up one without increasing the next value here. So this is going to become 74. Point and because I'm rounding the nearest tenth, I still need to put a placeholder there, so it's got to be 74.0. That's how you would round that one. So this question right here where it says round to the nearest hundredth, what I need to do now is look to the, to the thousandths position. So I want to round to the nearest hundredth. That's the second place after the decimal. I need to look at the third. That's greater than five, so this will become 92.99 centimeters. To round to the nearest hundredth, I have to look at the nearest thousandth because that's less than five. This will be 4,328.68. We don't change that number. Okay, I'm looking to the nearest hundredth. So I looked at the thousandth. That's greater than five. So this is going to be 0 0.29 kilometers. Over here, oh boy, here we go. So I want to round to the nearest hundredth. So I looked at the nearest thousandth. Okay, that's bigger than five, which is going to increase this by one. Well, that's going to, as soon as I have a 9 there, that's going to bump up the next one. So this is going to go up by 1. But that's a 9, so when I do that, it's going to bump the next one up, up by 1 here. So there's this little domino effect here. And so this is going to become 14 point, I want it to the nearest hundredth, so I have to have placeholders there, so 14.00. Here, uh, not a lot going on here. I looked at the nearest, I'm sorry, I looked at the thousandth position, that's less than five, so this will become, whoops, 421.66. And here, my thousandth position is, is two, less than five, so my hundredth position stays the same. And it's gonna stay at zero here, and, and you wanna write that, you do wanna write that placeholder. Uh, I realize that like 8.4 and 8.40 might kinda really be the same number, but when I write it, Okay, when I write that zero at the end here, that is actually going to communicate something about the measurement that was taken. And it's important that we do that. Okay, now we're going to round uh, each of these to the nearest whole. So that is going to be the value to the left of the decimal. So to do that, I'm going to look at the nearest, uh, actually, we're going to look at the tenths position because that's bigger than five. This will become 4,407. I'll round that up. Uh, I look at the four here. I don't worry about the six and the six here. Don't care about that at all. I'm only concerned about the digit in the tenths position because that's less than five. My unit st uh, stays the same. Here, 9.6. I'm only looking at the tenths position because that's bigger than five. This is going to go up one, which means nine has got to become ten. Uh, here, now this is an interesting one. The tenths position is three. It's less than five, 
so my units is going to stay the same, which basically means that rounds to zero. What that means, what I interpret from that is that the nearest hectometer here is, is no hectometer. Okay, we're not even at the halfway point. Basically, it's it's the closest full complete hectometer is is that there isn't one. Here, I look at the tens position because it's five or greater. This is going to go up, so this will become 86. And here, because the tens position is less than five, this is going to stay the same, stay at 12. Okay, and there you go. That's how the rounding works.